Hi, Tim. I'm Kami Allen. I write for themamadiaries.com. My family loved the movie. My eight-year-old, he he loved Pretty Boy. He, he has, like, he just, he loved him so much. He was a lot of fun. Um, I was wondering if you had a favorite scene that you did in this film. Uh, to be honest, I, I, I love all his ridiculous posturing and calling for his masseuse and all that, but even as a voice actor, it's always most satisfying to try and do the truthful bits. So, and I, when I finally got to see the film, found those bits the most affecting is when Maddie and, and Pretty Boy kind of connect. And I, I love Harry's writing and I love, I love that that connection's not too, like, you know, it's not too Disney. It's, it's truthful and it's not overly dramatic it's just a they, they're just seeing each other for who they are for the first time and I really love performing those bits and I think it really works on the on the film next up we have Amanda Taylor with guide for moms hi Tim hi, thank Amanda. you for talking with us so I love pretty boy he was the one I most connected with and related to because I'm always looking at myself in the mirror <laughs> so yeah. I just wondered what character do you relate to most out of all of them and why? Um, I suppose I, if I'm honest, I feel more like, you know, Nigel or someone, or I, cause I, in my industry, I'm an actor and a performer and, and I don't look like you meant, you know, I'm, I'm not a leading man. And, and you know, that, that, that's fine now because I get to do whatever the hell I want, but, when I was starting out, I definitely felt like, well, I'm not going to get the roles in the things because I don't look, I don't, I'm not tall, dark and handsome. I don't have a chiseled jaw, you know? And uh, so I think I feel more like one of those goofy, um, you know, uglies, but, um, but I also have had a bit of the pretty boy experience. You know, I have had a career where I, you know, I've just come off tour in the UK where all day, every day, I've just got you know, 29 crew and people looking after me and all, all their jobs is just to get me on stage every night. And it's really, um, you have to be incredibly self-aware and mature to not let that experience turn you into a, a jerk, you know? Um, so I, I got, I got a bit of all of them in me, you know, also I'm incredibly pretty. So I, I relate. You to are, people. you are. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh. Next up, we have Meg Harrell from Meg For It. Meg here. There she is. Hi. Oh, there she I'm is. Meg, Hi, Meg. From Meg For it. Um, hi, Tim. Um, hi. So you've done everything. You've done uh, writing, directing, acting. You're a comedian. You're a musician. <laughs> um, was it challenging or refreshing to do voice acting all by yourself? Um, well, it's, uh, it's refreshing and it's also something I've done quite a bit of. And I actually, you know, I was co-directing an animated film for some years when I lived in LA. And so I, I, I did a lot of, um, doing the directing of voice actors, which is a whole other thing. Uh, so it was quite nice to have people shouting at me instead of me shouting at people. And obviously it was really great because this film was voiced by people all over the world during lockdown. So I voiced pretty boy in, if I open that cupboard, uh, it's got foam paneling inside the doors because I would use that as my backdrop. And then I had a duvet on the mic stand and, and the whole thing was voiced on this equipment that I'm speaking to you through now. Um, so it was kind of, not just refreshing, but sort of life-saving to be able to work and be creative whilst being trapped in our houses. Next, we're gonna go with Amy Fulcher from As the Bunny Hops. Hi, Tim. Hi, so, Amy. I inadvertently kind of stumbled into a trend. And so I just wanna continue that with you. When I talked to Harry, he told me the proper way to eat Tim Tams. All and right. Today, Isla told me the proper way to eat a Carmelo koala. So oh. I think I just need to go to you now for Australian snack advice. What do you have? I don't, I don't think you should trust Isla about <laughs> how to eat a Carmelo koala. I mean, that, that woman, she's probably got some weird technique. Um, so it I just want to. Right. Oh, okay. No, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 
Um, well, look, the, the classic piece of very important Australian snack advice is that um, Americans don't understand why Vegemite is so good, but it's because they put it on toast like peanut butter. You need about a tenth of what you would have with peanut butter. It's a, it's a, a tiny scraping. Your butter to Vegemite ratio should be two to one. So um, that's my advice, two to one butter to Vegemite and uh, Vegemite is just a, a scraping or just don't eat it. I don't care. <laughs> no, you should eat. It's good for you. It's made of yeast. Next up, we have Megan Cooper from Jamonkey. Hey, I'm Megan from Jamonkey. Hi, Megan. It's so funny because we, we, a lot of us got the same box where we got to try Vegemite and things like that. And I had to prepare it. So that just made, it's just very funny because I prepared it the right way for my daughter. Oh, to try, so. oh good. Did she eat it? Yeah, she loved it. Oh, yeah. good. There you go. Salty so, goodness. But yeah. So with Pretty Boy, especially Pretty Boy in this movie, you know, he's, he's got a lot to learn <laughs> in yeah. life. So mm. I'd love to know what are some of the messages that you'd like for kids to take away from the film? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's all, it's such an old message, you know, that, that beauty is only skin deep and, and that um, you don't judge a book by its cover and that you have to see people for who they are. And, um, and, and yet it doesn't seem to be a message we're very good at. We're very, um, we're very inclined humans to assess people based on a small amount of information and, and the way we all communicate these days online and stuff just makes it even harder to see a person. We, we read a, a you know, three line tweet or we see a two dimensional image of someone and it is in our nature to make a bunch of assumptions. And uh, this movie just says, you've got the only way you ever really know anything about a person is if you spend time with them or, you know, ha um, not just empathize with them theoretically, but empathize with them by sharing experiences with them and, finding out more about them. And um, without a doubt, Pretty Boy has a lot to learn because he has to learn not to judge people by the fact that they're so-called ugly, even though they're obviously all beautiful uh, with their big animated eyes. Um, but also Maddie and the others have to learn that Pretty Boy is the way he is because of what he's gone through. His experiences, despite all his entitlement, are uh, uh, made him who he is. And, and he has to, everyone has to learn to see each other at a deeper level. Okay, and for our uh, final question, we have Tessa Smith from Mama's Geeky. Hey, Tim, Tessa oh, with Mama's hi, Geeky. <laughs> How are you? Thanks Look for at your the den. I yeah. know, it's lovely, isn't it? Uh, good. <laughs> I would love to know what made you want to be involved with Back to the Outback in the first place, because we really enjoyed the movie a lot as a family. Oh, great. Well, Harry Cripps, who's a uh, co-writer and co-director of the film, is a very dear friend of mine. And we, um, I, I don't know how much I'm meant to be talking about this, but we spent four years working on an animated uh, musical Australian film at another studio and it uh, didn't work out. So we had broken hearts and a huge amount of love for each other. And uh, when Harry, um, so I, that's not interesting for it's only interesting on a personal level. I mean, the, the thing that matters is that Harry's, I'm very, very close to Harry. And uh, to be honest, the thing that, um, the thing I do most, or at least I'm most in demand for is writing songs, right? So um, because of Matilda, I, um, you know, people want me to write songs all the time. And Harry said, would you write a song for my film? And I went, oh, Harry, I've got, you know, I say no to everyone, you know, I, I, I've got to be concentrating on my own material. But of course, he's Harry, so he didn't let me say no. So I wrote, um, I wrote Beautiful Ugly, the, the credit song, uh, and recorded it. And then they were still looking for a pretty boy and they got, they liked the song so much that they went, why don't you just do the, do the guy as well? So, you know, it just, it was fate, baby. Thank you. And let team that rounds up this first round table, please cut.